Hello everybody, welcome back to our Matplotlib 3D tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about what's called a wireframe. Um, but generally, at least for me, when I think of a 3D graph, this is the graph that immediately comes to mind. It's the kind of graph that it's like a, it's like a plane, but the plane has like a hills in it or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, if you look to the thumbnail, it's probably in the thumbnail what I'm talking about. Otherwise, stay tuned and you'll be kind of like excited to see what the heck this is going to make. So, let's get to it. Uh, from MPL underscore toolkits dot mplot 3D import axes 3D. No difference. Import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and import numpy as mp. The lovely numpy. Now, if you recall back to the very first um, Matplotlib 3D tutorial, just actually like four tutorials ago, um, we used the exact same thing. It's, it's plot wireframe, only this time we're going to be plotting or showing you what else you can do with uh, wireframe. So, uh, with that, uh, we're going to need to identify figure as plt.figure. And then ax equals fig dot add underscore supply one 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 projection equals three d needs to be quotes and so on. So that hasn't really changed. And for anybody who uh, might be getting irritated with the fact that pretty much all of this never changes, uh, I still kind of think that it's pretty important that you go through this kind of stuff and like redo it and retype it and that. So you kind of get used to it and you kind of memorize how to set up uh, your kinds of plots and stuff like that. So I think it's helpful. If you don't think it's helpful, I'm sorry. Anyway, continuing on. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go ahead and import some data for this because these plots, like if you, as you can imagine that, the, the first tutorial that we made was very basic, right? It only had like five plots to it. But what we're trying to do is make one of these like fancy plane plots and it's got like a ton of data. So I'm not about to sit here and just type out the data for you guys. <laughs> and I don't expect you guys to do that either. So what we're going to do is use something that's built in to, um, I think it's NumPy, um, for the, or actually I think it's, it's built into Axis 3D, that's right. Um, they've got like this thing where you can get the test data. And so what I'm going to do is copy and let's just, I'm just going to comment it up here is just so you see, you can see what you're doing when you're pulling this test data. Uh, let's see, just copy and paste it over here. So this is define get test data, and if that, let's just let me just do that real quick so you can read it. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to take from matplotlib mlab. It's going to import this bivariate normal thing, and basically it's going to generate a really attractive looking. Um, data set for X, Y, and Z. So let me just comment this out again. If you want to check it out, uh, shoot, I wish I could think of where this, uh, hold on. You should be able to just, just go to like your Python directory because it might depend on, you know, what your operating system is and where you've installed Python. But I would just search like get test data and you'll, you'll find out where it is if you want to look more into it. Um, if you haven't already looked through a lot of those files, you, it would behoove you to do it because there's all kinds of good information that you can find just that's like in files already installed on your machine. <laughs> you didn't even know they were there. Anyway, um, so that's going to be our test data. So moving right along, let me uh, make some space. All right. Next thing we want to do um, is go X. X, Y, Z is going to equal axes 3D.get underscore test underscore data. And generally, their little uh, delta for this is, is I think they, what do they use? 0.05, I think. Yeah, so we'll just say delta 0.05. And then what we're going to do is come down here. Now what you want to say is, well, it's pretty simple stuff. Plot underscore wireframe. And what do we want to plot? We want to plot X, Y, Z. And we want it now. And then you've got two other variables that we're going to, I'm going to throw at you guys. You've got R stride. And we're going to say equals five, I guess. 
and then C stride equals one. Now, or five, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, now the purpose of this, and actually, let's make this 10 to start, just so I can give you guys a forewarning. Um, yeah, that'll work. And as far as R stride and delta is concerned, I'm gonna explain both of those visually for you guys. Um, it's kind of like the bar charts. I think it helps a lot to think of it visually. So our stride is going to be how often um, are we going to just draw a line? And then this number, the delta change, is how often are we going to compute a line? Two very different things. So let's just save this and let's run the version that we have now. So this is what it's going to be generated for you guys. A very basic 3D wireframe uh, plot. As you can see, it's it looks actually pretty darn good with uh, the variables we've set so far. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is let's change our delta to 1.05. Quite a drastic change. Now as you can see, the computed, it's very, not only do we hardly have anything, what little stuff we do have, it's very jaggedy, right? It's not a uh, curved prettiness. Now, so let's just revert back to 0 0.05, save that, and now we're back to these, well, we'll render so we can see where we are. This is where we are now, and then let's edit R stride and C stride. Let's make it 5. Okay, save that, we'll render that, and now we've got, um, it's looking a little bit more detailed, but honestly the, the curve hasn't changed too much. Now the next thing what if we wanted to get a little crazy up in here and we want one and one now if you don't have a very fast computer um, and you hate lag or something I don't suggest doing this but I'm gonna go ahead and do it so here we go zooming in and now we've got this like wow that looks good now just to give you guys an idea let's see I wonder if I can make it big how much stuff we could fit in this tutorial video screen that I've made for us let's do, uh, let's do something like that and so now it's like this huge, um, huge one. Now let's pull up, let me see if I can pull up my, uh, okay, so here's my processor. And uh, in fact, let me, let me figure out what I want to do here. Let me bump this over a little bit, bump this over a little bit. And so like, uh, as you move it, since it's like every time you move the chart, it's got to like render the chart, you know? So if you have kind of a slow processor or something like that, at least for me, it's only bumping up, you know, a couple percentages. But as you can see, when I stop, it's like it goes right, like right back down to like four percent and three percent and stuff. But um, anyway, so if you have like if you've got like a slow-ish processor, you might not want to do it. And I'm not really even sure. I I would expect that this actually uses your GPU more than your processor. And I've I don't really know how you can uh, view like your uh, GPU stuff. But anyway. Um, if you've got a slow computer, it's probably not a good idea to put ones in there. I don't even know about like, let's put it on like 0.01, see what happens. 0.01, render that bad boy. Uh oh. Oh, you can only have an integer, so. Sorry, guys. So that's the lowest you can go is one. But anyway, pretty cool stuff um, if you have the data to fill it. Now, not, all, not everybody has data that's going to make that. Um, oh, it's very angry at me because I didn't actually generate a plot. Anyway, um, not everybody has that kind of data to fill, but if you did and you really wanted to make something like that, it's kind of useful to know exactly what you're using to fill it, and to do it, you're actually plotting just wireframe. Um, but do take note that you're basically doing 3D rendering now, especially if you make your stride small enough. But, oh, let me do one more thing. Let's make the stride like 10, um, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So now you can see that, you know, in one direction, there are, like, a, it's like, Going this way, um, you see there's just as many lines, but going um, down, you can see that, that, that we've made a stride, you know, that's a lot thicker, right? Looks like we, yeah, 10 was what we chose. So as you can see, now you've got an R stride of 10, and actually it makes it a lot easier to squiggle this thing around. <laughs> Before with 1 and 1, it was horribly hard, but now it's not so bad. Anyway, but that's going to depend on... Uh, again, your processor, and I really think your GPU, but like I said, I don't really know um, <clears throat> what kind of resources it takes from your GPU, because I don't know how to view it. If somebody knows how to view it, I'd be kind of curious to see how, how heavy this is on my GPU. So anyway, um, that's going to conclude this tutorial. 
uh, this tutorial. This tutorial. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.